read a little while over next week. Let's crack. That is yeah. something that didn't come up was in any of the stuff. it is to read and how fun it is to have humor in a book. book. Yeah. I love laughing out loud at a story. Yeah, no, it, it's, it, you know, the, <laughs> I think one of the things I don't think I got to say that I wish I had is I try to write books that I'd want to read. Yeah. Like that's, I think that's the, if, it, if it's funny, that's partly just because that's what I like. That's good. And that's sort of wh where it comes from. So. I'm looking forward to finishing it. Right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so my name is Stephen Goldman. My actual full name is Arthur Stephen Goldman, which is only relevant because I have one book that's under Arthur Goldman and one that's under Stephen Goldman. Uh, but the YA book is uh, Two Parties, One Tux, and a very short film about the Grapes of Wrath, and that one's under Stephen Goldman. That was way too long of an explanation. Okay. Uh, so it's a story about two boys, uh, they're juniors in high school. Uh, and uh, they're best friends, and one of them is gay and one of them is straight. And it tells really the story of, about, of the year where uh, the character David comes out, but it's told from the point of view of uh, the other character, Mitchell, and sort of what it means to their friendship and how they have to redefine their friendship and what it means to be friends, um, you know, uh, to be really close friends. Uh, in a world where they're beginning to date and they're beginning to try to figure out who they are. So I have two, two published books. Okay. Uh, the first one was my thesis actually from Emerson, okay. uh, which was a series of essays about teaching. I've been teaching okay. for a long time. But that didn't actually get published until after this book did. Okay. Yeah, so I sent it around to a bunch of people. Then uh, it sort of didn't go anywhere. I wrote this book or finished this book, which I actually also started at Emerson the, uh, in a young adult class. And then, um, I came, then the other one uh, came up, and so, that, so the, okay. the two books got published that way. So um, the real story about why I wrote a, a YA novel was because I originally meant to write a middle grades novel, but they didn't have that class at Emerson. So I uh, ended up in a YA class, and it, that first week of trying to come up with what topics, I went back to um, the pivotal relationship I had with a friend in, uh, in high school and what that felt like. And the original couple of paragraphs, which never made it into the final book, were about a night dealing with uh, really having a conversation about uh, what it would mean for our friendship if he was gay. And so that was the beginning of it. Um, I, uh, it ends up, I think, being a genre that, um, it's an audience I like. I like thinking about uh, what goes on. I think maybe because I still have unresolved issues from that area of my life or something, but, um, but the middle grades and the why, I, I find it to me more interesting than the adult world. Well, I think, I think that the, the rise is not so much that we're uh, seeing just a change in what people are writing, we're seeing a, a change in who we're thinking about as an audience. <laughs> I think that there were YA books that go way back, but they were written with a, much more of a didactic idea of what somebody should be reading in high school, as opposed to really thinking about what it is somebody in high school, or even not necessarily in high school, because a lot of YA books are read by adults, but like what a different market might look like. And I think that's where a lot of it came from. It's, um, it's interesting, if you go to the YA shelves in a library, they include a lot of books that are just really good books that were originally adult books that have gotten sort of recategorized because they happen to be books that speak to teens. And so I think, like, while I'm thinking about writing books, I think a lot about my audience, like, what would I have wanted to read at that age? Because the truth is, the things that were available when I was reading at that age were either in some ways not relevant to my life or was somebody's idea of what should be relevant to my life, and neither of them really appealed to me.